I am a Negro faggot. If you believe what others have to say of me. And as such, I am game for play. To be used, joked about, put down, beaten, bashed, not just by illiterate thugs in the night, but by many of Black America's best and brightest. On August 14, 1980, DC activist and Socialist Party VP candidate Mel Boozer addressed the Democratic National Convention and ripped the curtain off of one of America's last pervasive prejudices. This is Mel Boozer's address to the 1980 Democratic National Convention. Mr. Chairman, we have come to the Democratic Party, as others have come before us, to appeal to the vision of equal justice, the belief in fair play, and the sense of compassion, which are the bedrock upon which the greatness of our nation is founded. We believe that now, more than ever, Fairness, equal justice, and compassion are under attack by the forces of the extreme right. But we also believe that the ideals embedded in our Constitution by the founders of our republic are alive and well in the Democratic Party. Mr. Chairman, we come from towns and cities where our friends are jailed and beaten on the slightest pretext. We come from churches that have been burned to the ground because they admit us to worship. We come from families which have been torn apart because we have lost our jobs and we have lost our good names, which have been slandered by false accusations, myths, and lies. Mr. Chairman, the leadership of the Democratic Party has called upon us to be responsive to the plight of all oppressed groups. Governor Brown has declared that lesbians and gay men have a right to a job without reprisals and a right to serve in the highest capacities of civil government. Representative Dullums of California has affirmed that lesbians and gay men are entitled to the same rights as all other Americans. Senator Kennedy has declared that it is the responsibility of government to protect the rights of all American citizens, including lesbians and gay men. And President Carter, before he became president, declared that lesbians and gay citizens should not be subjected to arbitrary discrimination because of their sexual orientation. Members of the convention, we are pleased that, our char that, that the charter of our party now bans discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. Yet today, the suffering continues across our land by those who are willing to hold us up as scapegoats to the extreme right for all the ills which beset our society. But why should so many men and women continue to suffer from arbitrary discrimination? Why must we be denied a fair chance to participate in the American life, which we have contributed to as much as anyone else? Why must we be subjected to harassment and intimidation and ridicule when the constitution of this great nation has already provided that all citizens shall enjoy equal protection of the law? Members of the Democratic Convention, there can be no justification, no defense for social injustice. The Constitution does not make exception. We who have waited patiently to be admitted to the vision of the Constitution know the consequences of prejudice. We have felt the sting of ignorance, and we have come to the Democratic Party seeking new hope, which this party has always represented. Over and over again, the Democratic Party has insisted that in our society, there can be no haven for discrimination. Is this not the same party which has championed the cause of every minority which has come before us? Is this not the same party which has sought to include women on an equal footing? Is this not the same party which has led the battle for civil rights for black Americans? Would you ask me? How I dare to compare the civil rights struggle with the struggle for lesbian and gay rights. I can compare, and I do compare them. I know what it means to be called a nigger. I know what it means to be called a faggot. And I can sum up that difference in one word. No. Bigotry is bigotry. Discrimination is discrimination. It hurts just as much. It dishonors our way of life just as much and it betrays a common lack of understanding, fairness, and compassion. I know I am an American. I know not because of my birth certificate, 
But because when old glory is unfurled and the anthem is played, my heart is warmed and my eyes are watered. I love this country as much as anyone in this hall. And I'm thankful in my prayers for the privilege of being a citizen of this nation. To understand the significance of Mel Boozer's speech at the 1980 Democratic National Convention, one must understand the climate in which it was given. Ronald Reagan was about to become the first Republican presidential nominee to win the White House in 28 years, unseating Jimmy Carter and ushering in a wave of political and social conservatism. AIDS was about to ravage the lives of thousands of gay men, and for years into the epidemic, the White House would turn a blind eye while countless individuals died. The black community would continue to suffer from institutionalized racism, high rates of unemployment, the infiltration of crack cocaine into our neighborhoods, and would eventually become the face of AIDS. And there stood Mel Boozer, a man whose identity was unapologetically black and gay, who dared to enter each space without leaving part of whom he was behind to gain acceptance. It's been said that gay is the new black. Well, I'm here to tell you that black is still black. And although the black civil rights movement and the gay civil rights movement share similarities, they are not the same. But it matters not which group is most oppressed or which was first oppressed or whether they are identically oppressed. What matters is that no group of people should be oppressed. Mel Boozer reminded us that black gays and lesbians do exist, and the participants of the civil rights movement were not exclusive to black heterosexuals, and the participants of the modern gay rights movement are not exclusive to white gays and lesbians. By Rustin, we speak your name. Audrey Lord, we speak your name. Langston Hughes, we speak your name. James Baldwin, we speak your name. Alice Walker, we speak your name. The Reverend James Cleveland, we speak your name. Michael Sam and Jason Collins, we speak your name. Many of you may be familiar with the aforementioned but many of you may not know that they were as gay as they were black because the full truth of their lives were silenced. But I leave you to ponder the words of writer and activist Essex Hemfield, who said, it's not enough to tell us that one was a brilliant poet, scientist, educator, or rebel, but whom did he love? It makes a difference. I can't become a whole man simply on what is said to me watered down versions of black life in America. I need the ass splitting truth to be told. So I will have something pure to emulate, a reason to remain loyal. Thank you.